Hey guys, my name's Dale, and you're watching The Factoid. Skin. It's the largest organ that we as humans have. That said, it's most likely the most controversial organ we have too, being that, depending on your background, it has the ability to be different colors. And sadly, that has been one of the most contributing factors to the course of human history, which is kind of crazy to think about. But what I would like to do in this video is talk to you guys about three things. Which people are what colors? What colors are we? And what colors can we as humans possibly be? Now this may sound weird right now, but you'll understand it as we go through the video. And for obvious reasons, I'm gonna be leaving out tattoos and painting, because obviously through those methods, you can make yourself whatever color you want. With all that said, Let's get started. Now to truly understand why we classified ourselves as what colors, we have to go back to the origin of race as the concept. Back in the mid to late 1600s, a lot of people started publishing old ideas, trying to use science to prove that, well, if people look different than me, well, then they're obviously a different race. Problem with that though, is the science of the day supported that and a lot of people came to believe it. And it became culturally accepted at the time too. But science today proves that genetically, all humans are of the same race the human race. Skin color and physical features are adaptations, but we're all a part of the same race. The problem though is as the science changed, the culture didn't. So when someone is being racist, it's not on scientific terms, it's just cultural terms. Because science states, specifically, that we are all the same race. Just like a Chihuahua and a Great Dane, like how they have massive differences and they're both individual adaptations, they are still both a part of the canine family. And the same can be said for all humans within the human race. But this all starts back to a term called scientific racism. And a major contributor to this idea was a man of the name Francis Bernier. And this science that all humans that look different, scientifically are a different race, kind of snuck its way into science down the road, which became much more influential on all humans. Eventually getting to a man named Jonan Blumenbach. And even though Blumenbach was very intelligent, he had a lot of flaws that were constructed based on the culture of the time. He was a physician, a naturalist, worked in sociology and anthropology, eventually coming up with the study of comparative anatomy. And through this, he concluded that there were five races of people, and each group of people had a specific color designated to them. And he broke up the world into sections. But the man Jonan Blutenbach published these ideas, and because of that, he had completely shaped history. And his perspective has leaked into the society that we live in today. But with all that said, he has plentiful amount of flawed statements. So anyway, let me get into the five categories and colors that we humans supposedly are. He designated white to the Caucasians, being the people in Europe, North Africa, and most of what can be considered West Asia. He then dedicated black to the Ethiopian race as he described them, and that's basically people who have ancestry of South Sahara Africa. He then designated yellow to, as he called, Mongolian, or Mongoloid, being North Central Asia and East Asia. He then designated brown to the Malayan people, which is India, Southeast Asia, all the way to the Pacific Islands. And lastly, he designated red to the Americans, or the natives from North and South America. And yeah, those are the colors that we culturally accept as being each one of those individual races. The problem is that some of those colors aren't true. And to go a step further, Blumenbach also stated that all of humanity stemmed out from the Caucasian race, which science can also disprove. Being that the first humans were most likely very dark complected. As they became bipedal and lost their body hair, dark skin was required in order to deal with the sun. And as those people left Africa, they split into what would become the European and the Asian groups. The Asian group would then split again, become the Malayan and the East Asians, and then the East Asians would split once more to the Native Americans and East Asians. But the most radical thing that this guy had is he didn't give Jews a race. Supposedly they didn't have a race, they weren't white, they couldn't be white. So I want to apologize if I have any Jewish viewers, and you know what, just for you can be whatever color you want just to make this guy mad. You want to be white? Be white. You want to be purple? Be purple. Do whatever you want because obviously this guy's science is flawed, why not join the party? But one of the major problems with this is the Europeans of the time simply did not want to be classified as the same color as Asians. So the ones that were categorized were typically the poor, low-class people who had to be out in the sun. But their skin color in all reality would have been no different than a European guy who had to be out in the sun all day. Here's a chart that science came up with. You know that little thing that we should probably rely more on than some 16th, 17th century guy's opinion? According to science, or the Fitzpatrick scale, skin color can be broken up into six types. The first type being called light or pale white. The second type being fair or white. The third type being medium white to a light brown. The fourth type being olive to a moderate brown. And the fifth type being brown to dark brown. And the sixth type being very dark brown to black. 
And those are the colors we as humans are. So there you go. Those are the skin colors. Those are the natural skin colors. But what colors do we as humans have the capability to be though? That's kind of interesting too. Due to disorders or having certain chemicals placed into your body, you can change the color that you are. And two colors that people most definitely can be are blue and orange. There are two ways to be blue, and one way is to be diagnosed with metanobulemia. And this is a disorder when you have too much nitoglobin in your blood. And metoglobin does not bond with oxygen, being that people who suffer from this disorder have oxygen depletion. And it is treatable with medication and special breathing mechanisms. You can also get another disorder that can turn you blue called aria. And if you're Greek, you know what that means. Silver. And symptoms of this is turning you blue when you eat 2 to 4 grams of silver. For the ions in silver will go to your amino acids and harbor themselves in the cytoplasm. And they pretty much just keep circulating around your body. Meaning that it's pretty much uncurable. You've probably seen the picture of this guy throughout the internet. And he is blue not because he was born that way, but because he ingested silver. Now you may be wondering why would people do that? Well, a lot of people seem to think that it helps fight bacteria. There's also an American politician from Minnesota who is blue because of this. His name is Stan Jones, and I hope he runs for president because he would be... That would be awesome. That'd be hilarious. And when he wins, they can have the song I'm Blue, Dabba Deba Boo Die, play, or whatever the heck that is. And as I said, orange is another color that people can be. And you can get a disorder called keratinosis. By ingesting too much keratin, it will turn you orange. And if you've ever seen orange babies, it's because people will feed their children too much foods containing keratin. It only happens when you have too much keratin in your blood. It's not harmful, it just will physically change the color of your skin. And the last thing I would like to talk about is a pattern that people can have on their skin. And the disorder that can do this is called vitiligo, which can literally cause people to have light patches of skin start developing on their own skin. Much more noticeable in people with type 3, 5, and 6 colors, but people as white as me can be diagnosed with it. And it's not just you're born with it, you can obtain it over life and it can actually completely change the color of your skin over the course of your life. This young lady actually had that happen to her. Over the course of a few years, she managed to have vitiligo completely consume her skin color, making her a pure white. But here's some pictures that you can see of people actually experiencing this, and it can be quite drastic um, in contrast to the rest of your skin. And Michael Jackson himself stated that he had vitiligo, which is why he bleached his skin. So with all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think learning about this topic and understanding why we think the way we do and how that came to be is very important. It doesn't matter what color we are, we're all human. It doesn't define us, we let it define us. So if you're black, brown, tan, white, pasty, whatever, enjoy your skin color. Because your skin's yours, and you should love it. It's special, just like you. <laughs> so my question for you guys is, is what is your skin color? You can tell me if you want to, you don't have to, but I, I think that'd be kind of a, an appropriate question for this video. And with all that said and done, thank you guys for watching. My name's Dale, you're watching The Factoid, and remember, never stop learning. According to the North Koreans, who by the way also recognize the Gregorian calendar, but they use this because they just gotta be that way. I mean, coming from a country that's national animal is a human.